No? For the sun. For the sun. For the sun. No, maybe for the alarm when the water will start pouring. No. For what? Marketing. Well, maybe. But it's not the right question. Okay. Ah, okay. It's okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me start with the real stuff. So, web frontiers uh, with Smoto. On the web frontiers, what does this mean? Uh, what I mean with this? Uh, you probably know that on the web sphere, uh, on web technologies, a lot is happening these, uh, these times. And the question is if we in Smalltalk uh, we are able to uh, cope with all those changes. So, uh, so why frontiers? Maybe you know that Microsoft uh, announced that he will, uh, they will switch completely to HTML5 uh, web technologies in uh, next Windows 8. <clears throat> this was announced in May, and of course a lot of people are very angry now, uh, Microsoft guys, because uh, for desktop apps, it has to replace .NET and Silverlight and everything with web technologies. On the other side, you know Google and uh, HP and all others are, done, are doing the uh, operating systems which are completely uh, based on web technologies. No other stuff, just web technologies. Google, Chrome, OS and such things. So, question is, Will the future applications be, be, be based solely on the web technologies? Another question is how are we small talkers prepared for this? So uh, let me remind you that uh, in the afternoon we will have also the web panel about this question. So this uh, could be some kind of a, uh, <coughs> preparatory talk for this. So what kind of web technologies are and such things? <clears throat> so, many events at once happened in uh, those uh, years or so ago. HTML5, so called, JavaScript uh, happenings, web on the web browser front. Okay, event loop, event loop, I will talk a little bit later, later so called real time web. Mobile, of course, and cloud. We will go through all of this a little bit. So, uh, what are uh, the web technologies? What uh, goes to the web technology trio? There are actually three things here. One is HTML5, that is H standard for how web pages are composed uh, from the tags and so on. So, pure HTML standard. Then we have CSS uh, number three now, which is for designing, you know, web pages. And of course, we have a JavaScript for the adding the behavior of our web pages. So, <clears throat> when you, we are talking about web technologies, we are talking about those three things. And what is inter interesting is that those web technologies are more and more integrated in the operating system. So, this is, for instance, a present or say past. Okay, let me start with this. So, for instance, web technologies are just part of the more application part of the uh, uh, <coughs> whole the stuff. And usually in web browser, you have those three, those, those three and web applications are then uh, work, are working on the web browser. But more and more we are going this way. So with this layer to the application will be completely based on the web technologies only. So, uh, uh, especially on the desktop and those uh, user uh, devices. So, let me start with uh, those uh, uh, combination of everything. So, what is HTML5? This is not, as you see, HTML5.0. So, it's not another version of the HTML standard. It's different. So, that's why HTML5 is uh, written together, as you see. And it is kind of marketing uh, stuff. You can have a logo and everything. 
And also HTML5 is not only HTML per se, but also those full range of those API, APIs like offline, uh, storage, connectivity, multimedia and such things. All those things are now actually covered by HTML5 standard, which is not actually standard at all. It is actually will be draft standard since 2022, actually. Some, <coughs> some guys are joking that this standard will never come to the final phase. Because it is evolving all the time. And web browsers, web browser implementers are, are catching this evolution all the time and contribute back uh, to the standard. So it is quite interesting happening. On JavaScript front, Google did a big push uh, three or four years ago with uh, Google V8 uh, engine. <coughs> because uh, performance of JavaScript jumped very, very uh, a lot. And now actually uh, it is near JavaScript already. Not yet, <coughs> but it seems that we will soon very near to the Java, Java uh, speed. And it is on the server too, which means that uh, you can now start, <coughs> actually start building uh, several applications in JavaScript, not just client. And this is, this is changing a lot in the, uh, the industry. And of course, done is by Lars Beck, former small worker. So, uh, <coughs> which is also interesting. And the client side, uh, client side applications are now more and more uh, strong and kind of fat application as was before uh, on, uh, <coughs> on desktop. In JavaScript, of course. So, in web browser front, we have now, say, five major browsers. You have icons here. Uh, and all those browsers are now more or less on the same level by uh, 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 supporting the web standards. So it's not only, uh, say, Mozilla Firefox, which is up to the standards, while Internet Explorer is somewhere down, but even Microsoft is now uh, catching more or less uh, the others. So we actually have now more or less standardized <coughs> uh, browsers around many uh, implementers. So this is not another browser war. No. This is, those browser implementers are actually cooperate now. They are not fight each other. They cooperate, but uh, also they have, they compete a little bit, of course, but we help it. Which is interesting uh, for us too, the small talk helps and uh, <coughs> big, uh, big developers and small talk. And got their competitive goal is to be upfront in conformance uh, to their standards, to the emerging HTML5 standards. Not fighting each other, not uh, Microsoft uh, or Netscape wars and such things as was 15 years ago. <coughs> so, what about event loop? Okay. Uh, let me explain what this means first. In browser, you have just event loop in a single thread, and this loop just waits for events, like your clicks or whatever. And if you do some, uh, uh, some action, you do, uh, and which should wait something, you, you never block this execution, but you just uh, put a callback here uh, and go uh, go down. So this is Ajax for how do you do this? Uh, just prepare an Ajax uh, on ready state change uh, execute function, which means that when Ajax will return, you will execute this one. Then open this Ajax and, and continue. You don't stop here. So this is asynchronous non-blocking style of uh, writing applications and on the client side you must do this because otherwise people, uh, users won't be happy. <coughs> what happened now is that this style of uh, application design went to the server side too. So we have also now uh, 
web frameworks on the server side, which also has such kind of loop in one single uh, thread. And they are doing for everything asynchronously, like this query to the database. And just set the callback function, which will record when the result is done, but we continue immediately. <coughs> so I note that GS is such a, such a very uh, popular uh, web framework now, uh, completely JavaScript based on the server side, as you said. And uh, a lot of work is uh, done recently on it, a lot of uh, happenings. And hopefully, small talkers are, are already actually doing uh, with GTalk uh, work uh, also on this part. So, about real time web. So, what does this mean? First, uh, everyone probably know from the Twitter, for instance, you have this uh, notification of how many tweets are awaited for you. And this notification is updated in real time. So you can already see what real time really means. OK, for those who like definitions, it's here one in uh, 100 words. So real time it is a paradigm based on the pushing information to users as soon as this information is arrived. So this is the basic idea. Instead of requiring, uh, requiring that they <coughs> check uh, source periodically or reload the page or whatever for the new information. <coughs> it can be enabled in many different ways and require different technical architecture. It's been implemented in social networking. So Twitter, for instance, uh, Facebook, you see earlier this. Uh, search, news, and elsewhere. Making those experiences more like instance messaging like chat rooms, you know, uh, and facilitating unpredictable innovations. Early benefits include increased user engagement, so-called fall in those uh, flow in those circles, and decreased server loads, but these are early days. Real-time information delivery will likely become uh, ubiquitous a requirement for almost any website or service. So this, this is important. This will probably become requirement for every web, <coughs> web application soon. So it is important that uh, we do something on this way, this uh, Elmino. So to go a little bit technically into this web, uh, uh, real-time web, web socket protocol is something which is uh, a very important uh, technology new in HTML5. Uh, so, but why? If we uh, compare here, usual HTTP protocol with WebSocket protocol, we see where we see a difference here. Huh? We have here request response uh, uh, <coughs> duo, uh, while here we don't have request response, but we have a message which is sent there and, uh, and no waiting for the response anymore. So uh, we can send message there. What is more important, we can send message back whatever you like. We don't need to have a request first from the client to send the message back. That's why we have a, a bidirectional communication uh, and you can send many messages from to only to one side without a problem. While here you cannot. You can with uh, so-called commit uh, tricks, so you defer here a response for instance and such. Uh, but here this is uh, implemented in a protocol. So, we have here unidirectional communication, so one way only, and back is a response, and hard duplex. While here we have the bidirectional and full duplex. Also, the format of WebSocket message is very simple. It uh, starts, it's byte, byte array, starts with 00, zero and ends with FF, hex. And you have a text message inside, of course. It's not, not binary in that, that format. There are many other formats already, but this one is the simplest. <coughs> so you see you have only two bytes of uh, overhead here. While here, in this protocol, you have almost one kilobyte. So you have four, uh, 400 to 500 better performance here, uh, more or less overhead, to say. That's why 
this is uh, this is a protocol which uh, gamers are waiting uh, for uh, for a very uh, interactive gaming experience for so, 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 such speech speed. Okay, problem now is that we have two versions of this protocol in the browsers and so called FIX C76, which is now supported already in Swazu for uh, half a year. Swazu web server. So we, we have support for WebSocket in uh, Smallbox, that's the point. And we will, uh, the newest one, which is also in the newest Firefox, is uh, HiB10. And I hope we will have uh, soon uh, support uh, in Swazoo for this one too. So about WebSocket. Mobile. Okay, mobile, smartphone, uh, tablets. Uh, this is a big push in last year, as you know, especially because iPad from Apple. Android, iOS, phone, 7, Apple, and so on. Uh, okay, uh, applications on the mobile uh, are actually free, native, uh, web, or hybrid. Hybrid. So hybrid is actually mean native is done. Uh, they are done in Java, for instance, or there is a native language. Web are just in web browser from the mobile. But hybrid uh, are web applications which are packed as native one, which is quite interesting for both possibility too. So. What about smallpox uh, here? So how, how is the state of smallpox on the web front? Uh, and uh, first, let me, see, let me say this. I think that we miss the uh, desktop uh, GUI uh, train. So those desktop uh, frameworks, uh, for GUI frameworks are so lacking in the smallpox and it seems that we, we won't be soon up uh, up to the speed with others. So I think that we shouldn't miss the web frame. So this is uh, one of the important message here. Uh, we should do more here. Uh, and of course, we should use smallpox spirit because the or, uh, original uh, <coughs> GUI frameworks was done in smallpox and still are the uh, are used for answer and you'll see the later. So use the elegance, simplicity, pure object oriented. Uh, we have now uh, three major small dog uh, frameworks, Seaside, Ainda, and Yacht, you know, and GTalk is coming. Uh, Nico will have a talk uh, later about GTalk. Nico together with Goran, actually. Uh, and this is something which is now actually a bleeding edge in small dog. Uh, Gtalk is a uh, small talk over the JavaScript, so we can uh, use it, uh, small talk for building the JavaScript web applications on the client. And those fat clients, to say, uh, fat, uh, because in small talk we are able to build a big applications while JavaScript is still very hard for such kind of big applications. That's funny, and uh, here we have a few uh, possibilities again. Okay, HTML5 more or less supported, uh, but those APIs, uh, additional geolocation and such, are not so much, so we need to do more here. JavaScript, we have, as I said, JTalk, we have also Orca, if you heard about Orca already, uh, it was, there was a talk. We have jQuery and JavaScript as small talk in Seaside, which is also an interesting uh, uh, thing. So you can actually, as you know, uh, in Seaside you can uh, do JavaScript coding from the small talk directly. Uh, the other side, uh, GSI, uh, JavaScript is mostly integrated in AIDA and TVAD. So we don't see to know uh, JavaScript even from small talk uh, to use with this Ajax and such things. What is interesting is that we can use, reuse uh, technologies which were uh, now in Smalltalk, uh, actually come from Smalltalk from 80s, 90s. Like MVC, model view controller, a pattern, a dependency mechanism, uh, uh, observer pattern, and such things. Uh, what we are still missing is uh, change detection in Smalltalk. We have this in visual works, 
but not yet, not yet in quick file. So to, uh, to detect the changes uh, of the objects because of the dependency mechanism. So you know those pictures from the history, history books because this one is from book uh, from 1995. Uh, about uh, model view controller, especially the dependency mechanism, <coughs> where uh, view observe uh, the model, and uh, model changes are then uh, propagated through the dependency mechanism to the all views which uh, observe this model, and uh, all those views are of course updated, updated at the time. So idea is of course that uh, the same should be done uh, on the uh, on the web applications. Okay, state this model on the real-time web. Uh, Comet is uh, one technique to uh, you know, to have this real-time web experience. So you are update, updating in real time your application, your web web pages. Uh, all free framework does, does have, while web socket is so far supported just in AIDA. Uh, let me ju just show you uh, very quickly what I mean by this time and how this can be done uh, in small talk very simply. Okay, we have here multi, uh, one chat. And we have two browsers. Let me say this browser is far away somewhere in the world. But this is my browser. Of course, if I... Uh, No, yes. So uh, this is uh, this chat. Uh, those view, two views are dependent of one chat, so, uh, and then, but in different browsers. And of course, uh, if you like the real-time experience, must be the second one must be updated instantly. So uh, okay. So what we have here? We have one line of uh, text. And this is one element which, we, we, which is updating uh, everywhere. So this one is dependent of the lines in the model. And we have this part here. If we go uh, to the code, okay, we can see here. So we have web chat as a uh, model part where we have lines. And we have ch web chat up upper, which is in, uh, this is in AIDA. Uh, where you have the presentation, so view of this. And in view, uh, in AIDA you have view main, which just in this case add chat element, which is the main part of here. So this chat element is everything you need to have for this experience. So, <coughs> title, then then we have this uh, lines element, uh, which is a separate method, but very simple one. And we have this, uh, the second part, which is uh, input field and button. So input field the button, or submit, you just add line, and then update all those stuff. So as you see here, uh, updating is done just by calling one method. And this is Ajax updating, because it just updates uh, the same, uh, this same uh, element once more. What is important for the multi uh, multi user is this part. Okay, we have uh, some change mechanism, and just update again here. So we update this lines element, and every browser which has opened this uh, uh, <coughs> this view has uh, he. Uh, uh, Annotate this uh, changed uh, system and it will be updated immediately. So just by usually <coughs> small talk way of doing thing, things, uh, you can do very complex things in one actually one lines update way. So th this is uh, how this is done in uh, AIDA, and uh, <coughs> I think this is kind of how. Uh, how uh, it is, uh, should be done in small talk way, say. Okay, go back to the presentation. <coughs> mm. 
mobile, we have native apps which are quite covered already. It would be even better. We have Squeak and uh, Android uh, VMs uh, on iOS and Android. We have Squeak apps in every app store by John McIntosh, as you know. On web apps, okay, AIDA has some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, <coughs> support now for device detection, CSS adaptations for mobile devices and such things. Uh, geolocation also. Uh, while hybrid applications, I didn't help yet. That it help. About cloud, uh, cloud is quite supported already in small talk. It will be even more because we, as you know, VMware is the biggest cloud provider of cloud infrastructure, and VMware has now Jamstone. So uh, here, I think we have a great future, uh, and uh, we have also cloud port from the Jan van den Sant, which is uh, connection to the uh, Amazon uh, cloud. Small hardware, it's a inter very interesting initiative just working on uh, by uh, Roman Graducci to hosting uh, your images more in all three frameworks. And of course we need to more uh, those restful uh, support for those restful APIs to the Google, Facebook, Twitter and such things. So here we are still pretty weak. So my conclusion would be uh, <coughs> We have very vibrant situation in the web technology field. A lot. So we as a small talkers we need to do a lot uh, to cope with this uh, situation on the web technologies. Uh, and, but our community is small. So as browser implementers, uh, let me cooperate more uh, while also we compete. And I think this is already start to, to, to happen. And let me uh, continue, stop with Hegelian dialectics. If you, you are a little bit philosopher, you know maybe. The Lexis says that thesis and antithesis uh, should, hold, uh, should end up with synthesis. So thesis is, I have my opinion, antithesis is opposite, opposite opinion, but at the end we need to go one step uh, up. Okay, and this will conclude my <coughs> presentation. Thanks a lot. If you have some question. Thank you very much again.